You know that feeling when you're putting a project together and you realize you need one more part? We've got most of the parts done for this project that I'm really excited about, but we need to make a little enclosure for this circuit board, which is a camera here, which we'll come back to in a future video. And I whipped one up in CAD. Let's see how quickly we can get through the cam and machine this on the Tormach. We're gonna use the hog shear to rough out most of the material, which I'm really excited about. Let's dive in. Here's the uh, project in the oven there, just been powder coated. And we just cut a quick slug of material off on the DeWalt saw right there. Now let's make some chips. We're gonna start with a 2D adaptive on the hog shear. And as you can see, it's going to plunge in. And honestly, it's a one inch cutter, so there's not a lot of, uh, you know, it doesn't need to do a lot of work to get most of that material out. That's what's gonna be the time saver. I love the hog shear because it doesn't chip weld, cuts great. We're going to come in with tool 11, which is a roughing tool, but it creates a great bottom finish. And that's going to clean up this bottom face, which I want to be nice, maybe unnecessary. Same thing, clean up the outside first. Then these are all 2D contours. Quarter inch to clean up the inside, quarter inch to clean up, uh, just try to take out that little pocket, quarter inch to clean up the outside, and then we drill. Real quick on the 2D adaptive here, quite simple. We're just selecting that edge and we're leaving one uh, ten thou there. We're leaving some material here as well because it's a roughing tool, 10 thou, it'll come back and clean up on there. Let's use our Heimer to find the zero. I'm trying to do this, um, actually, honestly, how I kind of work. It's two and a half inch material, so on the, uh, the Y and X aren't critical because we've got excess. So I'm just gonna find the bottom edge or close to it and just type in negative 1.25. And I love that DeWalt saw. It does cut great. It doesn't cut as great as that surface, though. I did take a super fly real quick and uh, knock it down. Perfect. Z, X, and Y are all set. All right, here we go. Shear hog. We are cutting 5,100 RPM, 30 inches a minute on the normal cycle, but we're ramping in at 10 inches a minute. Which is, which is conservative, but that's okay, because I think we're still gonna have a pretty darn good result. We're taking a 0.3 inch width of cut and a 0.32 depth of cut, which should get us out uh, in two passes. And we're not hearing it now, but I've got a little vibration in my uh, Tormach right now. It doesn't really seem to be affecting uh, the work pieces, so I think it might, it could actually just be a piece of sheet metal. The other thing, I'm just being honest, is that I don't do enough maintenance. Um, anything should have some maintenance. The Tormach has been great, but I've, uh, I need to just stop and spend a day and you know take the bellows off or weight covers and, and uh, just kind of improve and so forth, which uh, question is, should I do a video on that? Do you guys think that's interesting? Uh, it would be, but it is something I should do. So I think we're about done ramping in. We should be bumping up to 30 here any second. And honestly, the ramp was most of the work cutting anyway, so I should have probably increased that. Um, oh well, lesson learned. Here we go, there she's cutting. So yes, it doesn't leave a perfect bottom finish because of the angle of the cutter, but it's more than worth it because it removes material so quickly. And I love the fact that it's just not gonna chip load. Even my roughing uh, end mill, my half inch, which we're about to use, I love, but you can chip weld or chip load that tool. And the nature of the shear hog is just perfect. And it's an insert end mill, so it's, it's you get two cutting edges per insert and you can buy new inserts. Uh, it's rigid and can cut deep lengths of cut. I, uh, if I sound like a fanboy, it's because I am. All right, let's fast forward through the second cut. I'll be right back. Tool 11, this is the half inch rougher and honestly it's not even cleaning up. You know what, that actually left a much better service finish than I remember. We are running this at 2800 RPMs and 20 inches a minute. 
we can take pretty beefy cuts with this. In fact, there's a video we did, uh, you can click here to see pushing it to the max here. We're really just using it as a cleanup tool a little bit faster than a quarter inch because it has more diameter. Um, but we'll still use the quarter inch to get into those corners. We did the cam for this in HSM, but it's uh, the same as Fusion 360. Uh, that looks the same, and there are a few minor differences, but you guys tell me. I, I like doing stuff with Fusion 360 because it's such a wider audience. Uh, I still, to be honest, use HSM a little more just because I'm more proficient in it, and I like SolidWorks CAD more than I like Fusion 360 CAD, but again, the fact that so many more people I think are going to be able to afford and use Fusion 360 means that's where I want to make uh, my videos on because darn it, that's what uh, it's all about. It's about getting stuff made. I have no idea how long this video is going to be, but I'm hoping I can edit it and have it be a good video and still be under like seven, six or seven minutes trying to figure out how to make sure these videos remain snappy and well edited and educational but um, there are plenty of videos out there from folks that are going on 20, 30, 40 minutes and hey that's great I just don't have the time to watch those. Quarter inch end mill 5100 RPMs here we're only going 15 inches a minute we could actually go a little bit faster because we're really just taking a very thin wall cleanup cut but no reason to push it. Um, anyways going back to video links we were talking about that we do a patreon supporter private live video every month where we can interact and talk and you can ask me anything you want and people were saying you know there there are just so many long videos out there so the idea I think going forward for bigger project videos is to do a shorter fun you know kind of like we did with the 12 gauge shotgun shell video you know there's a shorter video that talks highlights the project and some cool footage but then off of that there's a video on the CAD, there's a video on the CAM, maybe there's a video on some of the you know machining details or fixturing or, or you know takeaways and lessons learned. That way you can kind of pick and choose what you want to see about it. You know maybe you own a Tormach or maybe you're using Fusion and that's what you care about. So that's the idea. Could we have done this in one depth of cut? Eh, probably but again no reason to push it. Um, I'm using a brand new post processor for, for HSM and Fusion from Tormach, and that's interesting. It's doing that. It doesn't do a full M998 retract. It just comes up a little bit, but what I want to fix or change is I don't like it um, starting and stopping the spindle like that. Hear that? It's weird. Okay, now it's going to clean up the outside, and then I think it's just drilling the holes, and we'll flip it and face off the top. Yeah, I definitely could have done that in one depth of cut. Oh well. So that drill definitely walked on me a little. I, I knew I didn't wasn't going to spot them. Uh, we'll see. I don't think that's going to be a problem, but it's uh, not a. Not a uh, recommended machinist proud moment. Okay, we flipped the part over. We know we want it to be, it's 0.7 tall. So come down here, find Z0. This is where I love the touch screen, makes it fast. So now type negative 0.7 and we're good. Come up and we'll use our super fly. All right, 2,500 RPM. I'm just literally gonna turn the coolant on and jog at 20%. I'm taking about a hundred thou depth of cut, maybe a little much. Let's see how she does. Yeah, eats it right up, man. This superfly is incredible. Uh, just incredible. Another hundred thou. There is a major downside to this tool, which is that you will hurt yourself if you don't have the enclosure. Another hundred thou, and that'll leave us about 30 for a cleanup. You do have to be careful. You can't use a super fly because of the wide radius swing and the interrupted cut. You can't use it if there's a big flap that you're going to expose. 
um, because it'll pull it'll pull that flap up. We don't have that here. G01, Z0, F10. Just come down nice and slow. Whoop, whoop. Escape key turns you off. I forget that on Pathpilot. Z0. Boom. You know, let's um, let's come take another four thou, five thou off, and see if we can get that flashing on the edges. There we go. Clean up. Sweet. Here we have it, folks. Look at that. Speed machining. Uh, no, seriously. It's fun to have a CNC machine, but sometimes you're tired of making parts, I'll be honest. But then you do this quickly. It's fun. And we take our camera and we slide it in there. And how about that, folks? We're going to go. Oh, the holes line up just fine, by the way, which is great. So next up, we're going to go powder coat this. But if you're interested, stay tuned and sure as hell subscribe because the project that this is going to go in, I think it's going to be our best one ever. Take care, folks. See you soon.